Well, it's not every day that we talk about, um, I don't know, an interesting invasive species here in Alberta, but a uh, real pleasure to um, welcome Megan Evans, the Executive Director of the Alberta Invasive Species Council to the program. And um, you're not the invasive species, I know that, Megan, but uh, we are talking about pigs. And um, I got to say that I really did scratch my head for a while to think yeah. about Okay, how and why? And so give us a little bit of background. What are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about the issue of wild boar at large in Alberta. So these are feral pigs uh, that were introduced uh, in the 80s and 90s to Alberta in an effort to diversify agriculture. So people had farms, so they were meat farms or wild boar at large hunt farms. Um, and these are incredibly smart species. So they they learned, they escaped. You know, you have to have massive containment efforts to, to contain these animals. So many of them escaped. And then the market kind of, you know, the bottom kind of fell out of the market. And in some cases, producers even cut the fence and just let them go, not really recognizing the problem that it could become, right? So we now have uh, feral pigs, or as we refer to them, wild boar at large, roaming Alberta. And their populations are growing exponentially. It's a major, major problem here in Alberta. So, oh. So just on that on that number, in terms of population, um, do you have an estimate as to the size of it? We don't have an estimate of, as to the number of individuals, but we have uh, pretty good data with regard to the numbers of observations uh, that we have across the Canadian prairie. So Dr. Ryan Brook in Saskatchewan has been working um, uh, diligently with his lab mates, uh, et cetera, to, uh, to, to map and track these things. We also have good numbers from Alberta because um, there's a provincial eradication team that works uh, to go and track entire sounders, entire groups of these pigs. So we have a good grasp on kind of where they are, where the hotspots are, but we don't have any strong estimates for the number of individuals. So what kind of damage are these, uh, are these uh, boars causing to the land base, to agricultural, to other, maybe even wildlife and habitat? Uh, what, what's, what's the, the, what are we being left in the wake of here? Well, these are considered to be the most damaging invasive mammal in the world and the most damaging invasive species in North America. They're an incredibly damaging species. So they're huge. They're big animals with three, four, 500 pounds. And they'll uh, tear up crop fields and other vegetated areas in an effort to get at the tubers. So the plant tubers or the grubs and insects in the soil. They'll wallow in riparian areas. So they like roll around in the mud, kind of what you picture when you think of pigs, right? But that's really damaging to our riparian areas. So they contaminate water bodies. They also urinate and defecate in those areas along with transmitting other contaminants into water bodies. They'll get into stored feed which is a real problem for producers. They'll predate uh, livestock, particularly young livestock like calves and goats. They can eat small mammals. They pose a major risk to grassland birds, bird uh, eggs, nests, and uh, wildlife habitat in general. But the major, major risk and the threat associated with these animals is there, um, the threat of disease transfer. So they can host up to 89 different diseases that can be transmitted to humans, livestock, or wildlife. And some of those are what we call reportable diseases. So um, if we were to get an outbreak of a reportable disease, it would cause an immediate closure of our pork and beef exports, which would be devastating to the Alberta economy. So in the case where you have, you know, confined operations, you can contain, if, if you have an outbreak of something, you can contain that through biosecurity measures, through culling, you know, it's not ideal and it is a problem, but it's relatively easy to contain. If we get a disease that runs through the wild populations, that's a major problem and really difficult to contain. And in some cases, we have backyard producers where you have, you know, the livestock uh, fenced in and you have the wild pig on the outside and they can come nose to nose. Right. So so there's a real threat of, of that threat of disease transfer here. And and that's why we're, we're it, it, it's such a big deal. Right. And we're, why we're here to talk about wild war today. It, it, it's fascinating. I mean, we're I guess, as you said, we're going on to 20, 30 years that these animals have managed to survive in the outdoors. And I got to think that there's been some tough winters over that time period. And these things are still out there. So obviously incredibly adaptive to the, to the environment that they're living in. Yeah, they, they're they incredibly adaptive and adaptable. The Canadian prairie seems to be like a great habitat for them. You know, they've got lots of food in the crop fields. They've got forested covers and in, in forested tree stands. So they we're doing really quite well here. I, I think too, we're dealing with an animal that is, it's not a pure wild boar either. So there, it's the wild boar 
animal, but also they're, they're, they're crossed and they've hybridized with domestic pigs. So we have this wild animal crossed with an animal that's bred to be really big, that's bred to reproduce really quickly and bred to make lots of offspring. So we've created this mega invasive species that is doing fine in our climate, that is you know, finding all kinds of suitable habitat that breeds really, really quickly. Um, their gestation period's about 115 days a year and they have about six piglets per litter. So that is an exponential rate of growth, right? Um, and so we've been dealing with these things uh, for, for a relatively recent amount of time, you know, last 20, 30 years. But a lot of people have heard about wild boar at large or feral pigs before from down in Texas and down in the southern U.S., right? So we hear a lot about that. They are a massive problem down there. So the, the introduction into the southern states happened about four or 500 years ago because they were brought over there for food. Our introduction is much more recent. And it's a big, it's a cautionary tale for us that we need to get our act together now before we're dealing with what they're dealing with down there, right? And we, we don't have great strong Canadian estimates, but in the U.S., they estimate that uh, wild boar at large costs Americans one and a half to two and a half billion dollars every single year. So it's, it's just, they're tr- tremendously damaging. So I, I guess the big the big question, and a lot of folks that watch this channel have a hunting background, and they are probably just thinking, let me out there. We'll help control the population. Is that a viable option? Can we hunt? Can is that still being is it a being encouraged? Over to you, Megan. Give us some 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 outline on that question. Great question. So this one does bring up it gets people talking for sure. So as you'll recall, like Alberta used to have a bounty program where we did encourage hunting. Um, So in many counties, you could go, you know, hunt a wild boar, bring a set of ears in, you'd get $50. Well, that program is gone and we no longer encourage hunting uh, as a method of control for wild boar at large. And there's a couple of reasons why we don't. So first of all, um, we have an eradication program that I I mentioned earlier. So um, this program uh, involves... uh, Alberta Agriculture and Forestry and Alberta Pork teaming up to to track the wild boar at large of uh, the trail cameras with drones and reports from the public, which is what hopefully we'll talk about next. Um, so they track them and then they trap and remove entire sounders or entire groups of pigs. Now we need to remove the entire group because if um, if you're hunting the animals and you remove even half, even 50% of the individuals in a group, the remaining uh, animals, they, they're incredibly smart, right? They learn, they learn to evade future hunting efforts, they disperse, they go nocturnal, and they learn to, to avoid humans. So researchers uh, have shown that the only real way to get a handle on this is with entire group, entire sound or removal, and that's what we're working on right now. So the hunting efforts can make the pigs more problematic. They can make them more elusive, less likely to be trapped, so they can it can actually exacerbate the issue. So, so we don't recommend hunting, not as a control option. We're really uh, working on the, with this eradication program and we need the public to report signs um, and sightings of wild boar at large so that we can um, pass those along to the eradication team. So how is that reporting process uh, operated? So we have lots of different ways to report. So uh, you can use our EdMaps app, which is EDD Maps. Uh, so that's an invasive species reporting app. It's free download. You can call 310 Farm. Uh, you can email af.wildboar at gov.ab.ca, or you can contact your local municipal office. Um, and any of those uh, means of reporting will get the information to the same place. So we want people to squeal on pigs <laughs> in that way. <laughs> Uh, it's an awesome name. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get lots of lots of feedback on that one for sure. Uh, Megan, are there any natural predators that uh, can impact these uh, the the growth and the movement of these pigs? Not really, and certainly not on the prairies, right? So that's that's another reason why they're they're so incredibly invasive. There's not really any natural predators. So they have this massive rate of population growth, but there's no predators really taking them out. So so yeah, that's not impacting them at all. Is there a, a, a danger to public safety, for example, if, if folks are out and they do come across uh, uh, a number of these pigs, uh, either to the people or to pets and other uh, animals? Certainly, absolutely. And, you know, there was a report, uh, it was a couple of years ago now, but a woman in Texas uh, was killed in her driveway by a group of wild boar down there. So they do pose a risk to public safety as well. Um, they, they keep, they're just so such big animals, right? So in terms of, I guess, the, the, the objective of this program is to, to heighten 
public awareness um, that these uh, pigs do pose a, a, a very serious, not only ecological threat, but a financial threat. Um, talk a little bit about um, how you know when you get to a point where you think you've, you've, you've solved the problem. Um, and also, what are you doing with the uh, animals once they have been trapped and, and removed off the land base? So there's a few things there. Yeah. So our objectives for the program are really to create awareness. So uh, many Albertans don't know we have wild boar at large in the province. Others that are aware are really keen to hunt them. And again, we really kind of want to get across that messaging that that's not a great option for us to get a handle on controlling the population of these pigs. Um, uh, so we're really not encouraging hunting. And then we also want folks to be able to identify signs uh, of the pigs because you're probably more likely to come across signs of wild boar at large rather than the animals themselves. So we encourage folks to head to our website, which is abinvasives.ca. And we have all kinds of photos showing what the trailing looks like, what their tracks look like, what the wallowing and, and rooting damage looks like. So, so we do encourage folks to learn the signs so that they know what they're looking at. Um, so, so those are kind of the main objectives of the program. And then with regard to the removal, um, so they are humanely euthanized and then they are taken to the vet labs for postmortems. So we use them to learn more about what's happening, their condition, have they reproduced, checking for diseases. Again, th those types of things are really, really critical um, to, to do as well. So, so we're, get, we're learning more about them with, with every time we track them. Um, so just one more final question about the, the hunting related topic. You're recommending not to hunt them, but does that mean that legally someone could still hunt? And, and then the next question to that, because these animals carry such a, a the potential of a wide number of diseases, um, what if a hunter takes them, wants to eat the meat, what precautions kind of like chronic wasting disease, I imagine maybe the, the animal needs to be tested first before it is eaten. Well, yeah, so that's, I, I don't know if I have a good answer to your, to your last question. That's a great question though. Um, the, the first question about hunting, uh, there's no season on them. So you legally can hunt wild boar at large in Alberta right now. They're super hard to find. <laughs> I think that uh, hunters have found that out in the past, right? They're very elusive, very, very smart animals. So they're hard to find. You can legally hunt them, but we don't recommend it. Um, and the other thing with regard to disease transfer, yeah, that's a one I, I actually can't answer. I know with regard to the ones that are euthanized, like it's uninspected meat, so we can't put it into the food chain and they do carry all these diseases. So we want to be really careful, but that's something I I can definitely look into with regard to like human consumption. I'm not entirely sure. So that's a great question. The other thing I would like to add on the hunting piece, Michael, is so w the other reason why hunting is not effective. So let's look at the wild boar at large population growth versus like a deer. So wild boar at large, they can reproduce every 115 days. They have six piglets on average per litter. So that's, an, you know, say they have 20 piglets offspring in one year. So we compare that to like a deer that has one or two offsprings once a year. And, and, and so hunting is just not going to be effective when we have that type of exponential population growth, right? And, and that's a really important thing to consider. Like hunting will not play a role in bringing those numbers down effectively. We've got to remove those whole groups. So, Well, I think you've made it clear to all Albertans. They have their marching orders. They all have to squeal on pigs. Megan, thank you so much for this. A fascinating conversation. Uh, it really is. I, I did not know that these things created such an issue. So we really thank you for bringing it to the public's attention. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Michael.